Hi, this is Kevin at HoganTechnologies.com. We're in a garage today, so I thought I'd take a couple minutes out and make a little video on camber, um, kind of clarifying what I had done a blog post on last week. It wasn't really clear, so I thought I'd use the tire as a demo. I got Turk videotaping here. Say hi to everyone, Turk. Welcome to Diamond Gems. <laughs> and uh, we're going we're gonna to show you a little bit about camber. What happens with camber um, the tire, like I was demonstrating in the blog post, has to stretch on the outside. Your, your wheel is bolted to your car, your car goes into a turn and your tire stretches. This outside sidewall stretches and the inside sidewall gets buckled. You can kind of see in the video there how this is buckled here. Well, what happens is, is this loses tension down here on the outside because your entire load is going through the wheel, stretching it, and putting the load on the outside of the tire. That's with no camber. If you put a little bit of a camber into it, when you push on the tire, you're actually loading the inside of the tire, as well as loading the outside of the tire, and equalizing the contact patch all the way across and giving yourself some side weight. With a stiffer sidewall tire, you don't need as much camber into it as you do a softer because as you put camber into it, you need more camber in order to load the inside of the sidewall when the tire stretches. If your tire is not going to stretch that much, you probably don't need as much camber because the sidewall is going to hold up and give traction across the whole tire. Um, the difference between basically a modified tire and a late model tire. Um, late model tires generally have a softer sidewall and the modified tires generally have a, a stiffer sidewall with a center section, uh, stiffer center section too. Um, you gotta watch your air pressures. We normally run seven and 11 in the front and six and nine in the rear. Um, as a general rule of thumb, if you get too much underneath that with some tires, you get too much wrinkling in the center of the contact patch and it'll actually, you'll lose traction. Um, Another thing to think about with camber is we can always adjust our camber in the front. We can put shims in and take shims out to give yourself camber in the front and work with that. But in the rear, we really don't have too much adjustment other than a camber to rear end. And the camber to rear end is not legal in a lot of classes. So one thing to think about is if you have stagger at the rear of your car, you can actually put camber into your right rear and a little bit of camber into your left rear with stagger. You just got to be careful on how much stagger you put in to get the camber because then the stagger will make your car loose and it's, it's kind of a give and a take and a trade off between the two. But uh, if you can keep a little bit of stagger in your car and tune everything else and get everything else neutralized, uh, the car will actually probably have a little bit more side bite with the stagger and the camber put in with the stagger. Uh, more on this and other tips and tricks, go to my blog at www.hogantechnologies.com and hopefully I'll get a better microphone next time or we'll do some better videos but until uh, next time have a good winter and stay warm <laughs>